Well, hello everyone, and welcome once again to worship at Midchurch from St. Saviour's in Midrand, South Africa, and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. If you're sharing in worship with us for the first time, I especially welcome you, and if you'd like to know more about who we are as a Christian community, you can go onto our website, www.midchurch.co.za, and there you can find out more about who we are. We're also on Facebook and on Instagram as well. It seems quite surreal when you consider that we have not gathered for worship here uh, together as Midchurch for six months, but that is about to change. Uh, as I have shared with you over the past few days, we are going to be holding Sunday worship services again from October here in St. Saviour's uh, for anyone who would like to attend. Of course, there are limitations on the numbers, but anyone is, is welcome. We're going to start with one Sunday worship service for the month of October per Sunday. So one worship service on a Sunday for the month of October. And then in November, we will probably move to two services um, every, every Sunday. Now, although our building is able to seat uh, over 200 people, and if we put extra chairs in, it's, it's even more, and so 50% capacity would be just over 100 people, uh, when we consider and take into account uh, safe social distancing, uh, the numbers of those who are able to attend a service is 85. So we can comfortably take 85 people for a worship service, and uh, I want to encourage you uh, to book your spot for October. And because we can only take 85 uh, per service, I'm going to ask, and ask you if you would only commit to one Sunday for October to come around um, and come and be together, just so we can get as many people uh, attending during October uh, as possible. And also, although our young people's ministry will continue online, anybody can come to worship, obviously, families, children, young people, uh, etc. So if you're keen to book a spot, you can email the church office, midchurch at midchurch.co.za, or you can ring us as well, 011-314-1497, or 011-314-1416, um, and you can uh, book your spot, as I said. The worship services will be live streamed on our YouTube channel, and then also be available for viewing any time after that, uh, as we have been doing for the past uh, six months. I must say I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing a number of you back at worship, and being able to worship as we used to uh, in the past. Well, we have the worship team leading our praise and prayer today. Uh, thanks, Rindani. Greetings. As we start worship this morning, I'd like to read from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort ours, we ourselves receive from God. Let us praise our Lord and sing Jesus Christ.
There is so much to be thankful of, O oh Lord our God, for the beauty of this particular summer with its warm days and golden islands, its blue seas and skies, the green trees, the reds and yellows of flowers, the browns of the earth. Lord, forgive us for our doubts and fears, for our anger and pride, and for all those secret things we have done or failed to do that we regret. May we take new strength from this service of prayer and praise and worship and live today encouraged by this time in your presence. With your help, Lord, be determined to work in the coming week on these our faults. We thank you, Father, and bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
Heavenly Father, to worship your holy name is the highest calling on our lives, to know that we have been created to praise, to worship, to sing your glory, to tell of your might. We pray that, Lord, you have been blessed as we have been blessed by spending time in praise and prayer to the glory of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's time for our uh, offertory and also for some of our ministry news, and I'm going to ask uh, Ren Dani to uh, come back, and he's going to lead us in our offertory reading uh, this morning. Thanks so much, Ren Dani. Our offertory reading is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 17 to 19. Tell those rich in this world's worth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Tell them to go after God, who piles on all the riches we could ever imagine, to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous, if they do that, they'll build a treasure that will last, gaining life that is truly life. Amen. Thanks so much, Indoni. Friends, it is with joy um, and in worship of God that we are able to bring to Him our tithes and our offerings. It's an act of thanksgiving. And remember that your generosity is an investment in the kingdom of God and in the proclamation of the gospel, both in word but also in, in deed. So thank you for your continued support of God's kingdom through the ministry of Midchurch, and you're invited to bring your tithes and offerings through EFTs or direct bank uh, deposits um, as you are, are comfortable. The details, the bank details um, for the church are on our website, www.midchurch.co.za. Our food parcel ministry continues. Thank you for your continued support of that as well. But what I particularly want to mention today is actually the meal pack uh, ministry where you're able to purchase a meal pack for 15 rand, which feeds four people um, a, a good hearty meal, and you're able to hand those to whomever you would like. We have quite a bit of stock of that, so if you are wanting to order a meal pack, please do. Uh, just contact the church office, and then uh, you can come and, and collect that. Your prayer request, please to be emailed to prayer at midchurch.co.za so that our daily intercessors can bring your needs and those of your friends or your family or the world uh, to, uh, to the Lord. Our podcast uh, ministry, new online ministry, continues. We have a series on the life and work of the Holy Spirit that uh, is currently on the podcast, and every week a new episode is published. And on whatever podcast platform you use, you simply have to search for podcasts at Midchurch, and it'll pop up, and then you can uh, listen to uh, those podcasts. As we have said to you before, during this uh, lockdown, and well, and certainly even once uh, we're out of any levels and life is back to relative normality, we're going to keep the online ministry going, and you are the missionaries. You are the ones who share the content with anybody that you would like on social media platforms, by SMSing, by WhatsApping, by whatever way that you uh, would like. And then finally, uh, very excited uh, about uh, the Alpha course that we are going to be hosting. And Alpha International have done a fantastic job in creating an online version uh, of the Alpha course, which means you can attend from the comfort of your home or from wherever you would choose anywhere in the world. Um, and we're starting on the 30th of uh, September. Uh, we have been running Alpha successfully here at Midchurch for, for many years. And if you've not attended one, I really encourage you. Why am I here? Does God exist? What's my purpose? What is the church? What are we here to do? All those wonderful questions are dealt with in the Alpha course. Starting on Wednesday the 30th at 6.30, you register by emailing the office, 
midchurch at midchurch.co.za. We'll then contact you, give you all the Zoom details. Um, it really is incredible how they've put this all together, and we look forward to sharing uh, in this course with you. Um, I'm part of the team this time, and um, looking forward to that Alpha course. So, oh, and not only for yourselves, of course, please uh, invite friends and family. It's actually so much easier to just send them a, a link to a Zoom meeting than telling them to come to worship or to a course here at Ministry House or something. So here's your oppor opportunity. If you've got an, an, a family member or a friend that you've been dying to invite to an Alpha course, this is the time to do it. So uh, please tell them about it and get them to register. Uh, Bruce Sturton is going to be leading us in our afternoon prayer. Thanks, Bruce. Let us pray. Lord, many of us have suffered financially during COVID-19, and yet we are reminded in Scripture in Mark 12, verses 41 to 44, that when Jesus was in the temple, he said, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all that she had to live on. Lord, we just ask that you help us to give, as we are able, with the same spirit as the widow, since we know that you love a cheerful giver. Please grant wisdom to those who will distribute these tithes and offerings so that your name may be glorified, for you have taught us, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Bruce. Well, if you've been a part of Mid Church for a while, uh, you will know that every year uh, during September, one of our Sundays is set aside for our annual Thanksgiving worship service. Now, this service is associated with the Feast of Tabernacles, which is usually celebrated in late September and early October, marking the end of the agricultural year in Israel, uh, particularly the harvest of the fruits of grapes and olives. The Feast of Tabernacles then becomes a celebration of God's provision from the land as well as for the way God provided for the Israelites when they were wandering in the desert all those years uh, ago after they left Egypt. And for 40 years they wandered and God provided uh, for them. And not only that, but they stayed in temporary structures or tents, or another word is a tabernacle. Um, and so this feast uh, became an opportunity to remember and celebrate God's provision and His grace in their lives, and so now too in our lives. Of course, we've just finished our latest teaching series, our thank you series, where we were encouraged to grow a godly attitude of gratitude. And that theme text you will remember was 1 Chronicles 29, 13. Now, our God, we give you thanks, and we praise your glorious name. This year, for our congregation, it's also our 35th anniversary and so many of you came yesterday to participate in our 35th birthday drive through in which uh, you gave the back your craft uh, that uh, you, uh, are, are, is going to be part of the collage that we create to celebrate our, our 35th. You, I know some of you also gave a little thank you list that we were able to pin on the front door and the entrance of the church, an expression of gratitude to God. Some of you were able to bring cans of pulchards for our food parcel project and receive a cupcake, a birthday cupcake. So thank you for coming. It was lovely uh, seeing so, so many of you. Now, every year in our service of Thanksgiving, we ask a few of our members to share their stories with us. Now, the intention is not to place anyone or anyone's experiences on display, but to allow their stories to encourage us and remind us of God's faithfulness, no matter what we're going through. So this year, I asked four of our members if they would tell their stories. They all agreed, but instead of having them come and stand here and potentially be intimidated by the camera, because I certainly am, and I've been doing this now for six months in front of the camera, I said to them, rather write down your testimony, and then, if you're willing, I will share it with the congregation on your behalf. They all agreed, and so they have uh, written down their story, um, and uh, what I did, however, ask them to do is also to send me a photograph 
of themselves so that at least you'll be able to remember who they are when I share uh, their story. So first of four stories. The first is from Sikle, uh, Sipe Sikle Glugla. You'll know the Glugla family um, have been with us uh, for many years, and this is a Sikle story. July the 6th, when it all started, my journey with COVID-19. I woke up early hours of the morning with a tight chest. I thought to myself, it's that time of the year for me where I normally have bronchitis. So I visited my GP and I was told that my asthma is under control. We even practiced how I must use the pumps. The doctor asked me how I felt about COVID-19 and my response was, I have no issues with testing. So she wrote a letter for me to be tested. Come the 7th, I went to go test for COVID-19 and honestly it wasn't too bad. On the 9th, I started feeling worse. My chest was getting tighter and it felt like my nebulizer was not working. Come the 10th of July, my results came back and I was positive. This answered the question of my chest being tight and not being able to breathe properly. I called Buyiswa, my beautiful wife, he puts in brackets. Well done, Sihle, for putting that in. I called Buyiswa, my beautiful wife, and I notified her about my results. She rushed home from work so that she could also test for COVID. And my brother, since my brother was uh, living with us when lockdown began. Their results came back positive within 48 hours. And I realized I had infected my family. I really felt so bad about this, honestly. My brother went to quarantine at our parents' place since there was more room for him there to stay. Buyiswa and I quarantined uh, together. She was not reacting as badly as I was when it came to the virus. My underlying condition was becoming a serious issue. On the 12th, the breathing was becoming uncomfortable, and I decided that the hospital would be the best solution. On the 13th, I went to hospital, and boy, I was soaking wet with sweat. I struggled to walk, and breathing was a challenge. Before I left home for hospital, Buyiswa made me promise that I would be coming back home. I told her not to worry. The first two hours in hospital was a nightmare. That is how long I waited to see a doctor, and this was a private hospital. How much more it would have been at a public hospital. In times like those, you truly appreciate what you can afford uh, when uh, most can't. To cut the long story short, I had serious health challenges in hospital. There were times when I was trying to remain positive. There were times where I could just give up because I was, it was really difficult. I never thought I would need to rely on oxygen, hospital oxygen, to stay alive at this stage in my life. During my stay at hospital, I started questioning some of the decisions I'd made in my life. I was worried about how Buyiswa and my parents were coping. I was worried about how Buyi and I were just newlyweds and how we would be insane if anything bad were to happen. It's very easy to lose faith in times like these. So I decided to accept my situation and accept that it was beyond my control. I prayed to the Lord morning and night. I took off my wedding ring at times and I held it tight every time I prayed. I was so thankful every morning when I woke up. The ring reminded me of the good times a person has had and that motivated me to keep going. Having family and friends when you are in difficult situations is a big positive. This motivates a person to keep on fighting. The love I received from my family and the mid-church family got me going. I started to practice breathing without the oxygen, even though it was very hard. You start to think about people who don't have support structures like family and friends. How do they cope? When the doctor told me that they will be discharging me after being there for seven days, I cried because I knew how much I missed home. When Buyi fetched me at hospital, I couldn't believe that I was making my way home. Just seeing people around me felt like a privilege. It took an additional three weeks for me to recover and to be active. I thank God for the support I've received from family, friends, and my mid-church family. I would like to thank our parents for supporting Buyi and making sure she never felt alone. To Musa, my brother, for keeping things together for me. Thanks to Rev Chris for the motivational messages he sent every day. Thanks to Bui for looking after me while I was down, and most importantly, thanking our Lord for my life. Thank you, Cecilia, for sharing your story uh, with us. And I thought instead of praying for each person after their story, we'll pray for everyone right at the end. 
um, of the testimonies. The next testimony is from Carl Nell, and he writes, The lockdown forced all of us to restart, to rethink, to replan for the future. Since 1994, I have been servicing the billboard industry and became one of the best in the industry. But then the lockdown happened. To make a long story short, I was forced to close my business, retrench 10 employees that had become like family over the years, and sell almost all my assets to keep the wolves away. Basically, I lost everything that I had worked for for 25 years. My first marriage in 1999 ended a number of years ago with a very difficult divorce that took years to finalize. God spared me through that and then brought me Linda. Chris married us in November 2015 and I don't regret a moment. I forgot to put them up. Apologies, Carl and Linda. And I don't regret a moment. Linda lives with a chronic condition that requires medication that we can no longer afford. Due to the business closing, we had to cancel our medical aid. It has been very difficult for her. But there are two opportunities that have reminded me of God's faithfulness. The first is, I hope I pronounce this correctly, Joao Bello Fishing and Camping LDA, which is a company that I started five years ago in Mozambique. Uh, www.fishingmozambique.com <laughs> The communities around this project have taken us into their hearts and only after I got to know them better did I learn how religious and kind they are. Zimilene and Mahihelene are the two local communities in Haihai that changed my heart from being hard as a rock to being filled with love and respect for my fellow humans. For the past five years, before lockdown, I have been in Mozambique at least two weeks in a month, and there was always a church, community leaders, pastors, and God-abiding citizens wherever I went. Anastasio Mutise is one of these pastors that was a huge inspiration in my life with advice and leadership skills that brought me back to the straight and narrow road. God all writes, please don't be offended, Chris. He's almost as good as you. <laughs> the second opportunity came to me by way of my son, Alexander. I thank God for him and the daily messages Chris shares, in particularly the one on the 3rd of September, where Chris spoke about spring and his maple tree in his garden. He said, okay, so now I'm reading myself. <laughs> I'm told by those who know these things that typically the colder and harsher a winter is, the better the spring growth will be in the plants and trees. We've had a cold winter this year, and in light of the COVID pandemic, it certainly has also been a harsh one. Alphonsus Liguori, an 18th century Christian theologian, artist, and poet said, suffering is to the works of God, to us, suffering is to us, what the frosts of the winter are to plants. Far from destroying them, they help them to strike their roots deep into the soil and make them full of life. Spring reminds us of new beginnings and fresh starts. In Psalm 51 verse 10, David writes, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I pray for a renewing of your heart and spirit this spring. There are, are indeed a number of lingering winter troubles and hardships, but we look to the fuller life that will come after the frosts of this winter have passed. passed. That is what I wrote. And Carl then says, after reading this, I realized that there was a seed in me all this time, just waiting for the right temperature, moisture content, and food to germinate. Aquaponics is our future. I've started a project to support my son Alexander's dreams, and now I am so excited that I can't sleep anymore because of the first time in years I can actually see a small light in the very dark tunnel. It's so amazing. But to give you an idea, and I did Google this myself to, to understand what aquaponics is, and just to describe, you can imagine a tunnel with a trough that has fish in it, that's got water and then veggies or plants growing in that. He says, people in need eat the fish and the veggies. The veggies eat the fish waste in the water. The fish eat the fly larva. The flies eat the vegetable waste from everyone's kitchens and repeat. Okay, so aquaponics. 
So although there is a very small light in the scary tunnel that we are in, sometimes it's difficult to focus on the light, but like my late brother advised me, just keep going to the light of God because in His light, nothing and nobody can hurt you. They will either join you in the light or they will run away from it into their dark corners. I thank God for His blessings. He is good with us all the time. May God bless you with all my love, Carl. Carl, thank you for sharing your story uh, with us, and we will pray for you and Linda in a moment. The next story um, is about the Gaza family, and it comes from Nonchlantla. We know her as Noni Gaza, um, and this is her story. It was in the middle of July. I remember I was working from home, as I have been since the beginning of the pandemic in March. It was late in the evening. I started experiencing terrible pain in my back. I thought it was probably because I had been using my dining room chair as an office chair. My back was now giving in to the strain. I don't think Nonny was alone there. The minute I stood up, I felt a sudden heat like fire coming through every pore of my body. But at the same time, I felt extremely cold. That's when I realized that this is not just about the chair. Then the dry cough started, the kind of cough that makes you feel like every rib of your body is breaking. My husband, Mondli, at this time also started coughing. Through this time, we were not thinking of the big C of COVID. The kids were getting worried. I kept telling them, it's just flu. We're in the flu season. It's normal. It's going to pass. We started taking all sorts of concoctions, but nothing was helping. About two weeks later, we decided to see the doctor who immediately referred us for COVID tests and prescribed medications for both of us. I remember how uncomfortable and gruesome the screening was. And at this time, the coughing had gotten even worse. The next morning, we both woke up to the SMS that completely changed our lives. And she took a screenshot of the SMS, which has got your path care, Miss Nonchlantla Gaza. Your sample taken on this date contains sars COVID-2 virus, meaning you are infected. Please immediately isolate yourself. Inform your recent close contacts to do the same. Discuss with your doctor for treatment and advice. It was as if the virus was saying, I can now come out to play as everybody knows of my existence. I now started losing my breath. Mondly was convinced that the sun would help us. Every morning we woke up, took out the mattresses and lay under the sun all day, coughing. It was the most difficult time because we couldn't leave our bedroom as we were afraid for the kids at the same time. We relied on them fully to make us food, so they had to wear masks whenever they came close to us. Day three after the results, I remember I was laying under the sun as usual. I realized that I could not breathe. The coughing had gotten even worse. That's when Monley rushed me to the hospital. The minute we said uh, he was also infected, he was not allowed in. So I had to go in alone. I was immediately admitted, diagnosed again with the COVID and with pneumonia. They said it's some sort of COVID-19 complication. My lungs were damaged. They were not responding to treatment. I had to be transferred to ICU. At this stage, I'd lost 100% ability to do anything for myself. I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink. Everything around me test, tasted and smelled like diesel. I developed severe diabetes and I was put on insulin injections. I was not allowed to see or come in contact with any of my family. Through this time, I realized that God works in miraculous ways. It is still mysterious that Monley never got too sick since we were both infected. He was able to stay home and ensure that the kids were looked after and okay through all this time. He was able to drive to the hospital daily and bring me whatever I needed, even though it meant he was not able to see me. God gave him this amazing strength. In fact, I'm still not sure whether he was not sick or he decided that one of us must simply be strong for the rest. I remember asking everyone who contacted me for prayers because at that stage, I knew that the demon I was facing was way bigger than all the medication you can think of. I could also see that all the specialists that surrounded me were afraid. The day I came out of ICU and I transferred to high care, the nurses were amazed. I remember a friend of mine who is a nurse saying to me, nobody survives COVID from ICU. 
My response to her was, Mark 10, 27, all things are possible with God. Slowly, the doctors started reducing the amount of oxygen I was on. I started to regain my strength. I could walk to the bathroom without oxygen. The morning the nurse said to me, you are going home today, I fell on the ground and I cried like a baby. I couldn't stop praising God. She started crying too. To this day, I still cry when I think or I talk about the experience. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I felt so undeserving of the grace that the Lord bestowed upon me. Romans 5 verse 8, he loved me at my darkest. I have learned to appreciate every blessing in my life. Truly, every breath I take is a blessing, for I have known how to be without it. People talk about appreciating every day. In hospital, I was praying for every breath. The Lord not only healed me, He protected my children throughout this experience. Not one of them were infected. He is a God of miracles. I'm still on the road to recovery. I know that I serve a living God and His promises are true. Exodus 14, verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. I want to thank God for the mid-church prayer warriors who interceded for me every day. Love, Noni, and Monli, Tobeka, and Dile, and Monli, Jr. Noni, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And then our final story comes from Michelle Gordon. That's Demi and Fani the two children, and also I see Anne Morgan over there in one of the photographs, and Michelle writes, uh, Good morning, my church family. It all started a year and a half ago with a simple Easter egg and an amazing friend named Anne Morgan. Throughout my life, my experiences of religion, Christians, and churches were generally not positive and somewhat confusing since people said one thing but behaved in the opposite. My mother had me out of wedlock back in the day when it was frowned upon. The church she belonged to told her to terminate her pregnancy. She refused and was asked to leave the church. My mother found a lovely Methodist church in Alberton where we lived, which she attended occasionally, but eventually that also stopped completely and church attendance was only for weddings and funerals. My father grew up as a staunch Roman Catholic in a household of 19 siblings, my grandfather had 10 children with his first wife and 10 with his second. Unfortunately, one child passed away. Old enough to leave the house, he became an atheist since he felt religion was forced upon him. He chose to teach me about all the religions and said I needed to decide for myself. I completely understand why he did this, but now as a Christian and a parent, I see how dangerous and unhelpful it can be to allow a child to make such a decision on their own. For us, Christmas was about Santa coming to town. Easter was about egg hunts, copious amounts of chocolate, and a weekend off for the family. And even though I had a children's Bible that I read from time to time, they were just stories for me. Over the years, alcohol took over the household. Infidelity poisoned my parents' marriage. There was no respect between them, and I grew up to, grew up to what I thought was normal for parents to hit scream and swear at one another no one cared no one listened life was always so busy and so noisy we lived past one another i was an aggressive teen filled with anxiety impatient lonely and sometimes suicide crossed my mind i made many poor decisions i entered abusive relationships over and over life was not good i fell pregnant with demi at 23 we decided to get married before she was born so that we could provide a stable environment for our little girl. We had Farney Jr. at 25. Our marriage soon started, uh, started following that of my parents. Luckily, alcohol was not a factor, but I see now the absence of God in our household was the biggest problem. I was forbidden to go to church. I was not allowed to teach the kids about God. And at family Christmas lunches, I had to sit outside with the kids away from the family worship taking place. It was horrible. After 15 years of marriage, it ended up in divorce. It was a four-year battle, which only recently ended in February this year. I lost my entire family support and no longer have contact with them. I lo lost all of our so-called friends. These past four years were extremely tough on all of us, but it was my biggest teacher, and through all this, I experienced the love and grace of God. 
A few years ago, I had the privilege of running comrades and shared an accommodation with a running club called Alpha Centurion. This is where I met the humble and kind-hearted Theo. I then joined the club and also met Anne. They ran with me, always so happy and smiling and laughing and kind to others, always offering help and support. I was like, I want that happiness too. What is their secret? And then the Easter egg happened. Last year, Midchurch requested their members take the Easter egg they were given and find someone they wanted to give it to. I'm a sucker for anything chocolate, but when Anne handed that egg to me, I felt something different. It was at that time in my life I was really searching for a place of belonging. I asked Anne if I could attend her church with her. As I walked through the doors of Midchurch, a sense of relief settled over me. It's like when you take your heels off after a long day and sit down for the first time, there is instant relief and comfort. As the service began, I was filled with warmth. I was overwhelmed by the love I felt surrounding me, by the genuine smiles that each person would give to each other, the firm and loving handshakes between members, genuinely smiling and asking each other how they had been in the week. The tears dammed up, and I started to sob and continued to sob throughout the service. This was it. Father, I'm finally home. That empty, lonely feeling in my tummy disappeared that day and never returned. I finally have a village of my own, a family I can turn to, a happiness in my heart, even through really tough days, knowing that I am not alone, that God is by my side no matter what. I have conversations with God all the time. I love worship music and I love attending church. This past Christmas was the first one I ever attended church, and I loved it. I understand the true meaning of Christmas now. Easter this year was unbelievable. I sobbed my eyes out when I realized what Jesus went through on that cross. And what us as humanity did to him was horrible. I, mo I mourned the loss of our Savior, yet I celebrated the gift of life and unconditional love he gave us when he died on that cross. I am so grateful and so truly blessed and thankful for being a child of God and a part of the Midchurch family. Thank you to my home group family that welcomed me with open arms into their lives and continue to be a blessing in my life. I hope and pray that I can be a blessing for them too and that as a parent I can offer my children the love and support of a good Christian parent. In this life, no family will thrive, no marriage will work, no business will grow, without the presence of God. Be blessed and keep safe, all my love. Michelle. Now in her enthusiasm uh, for her newfound faith, Michelle joined our confirmation group for 2020. And in a few weeks time at the end of October on the 25th, she'll be joining the other people, uh, part of that course, and will be affirming her faith in Jesus Christ as her Lord and her Savior. Friends, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the stories shared with us today, as we recognize your presence in the midst of all the suffering and the trouble that we face, we pray that your Holy Spirit will provide each of us with a deep assurance of your love, of your presence, of your peace, your joy, your hope, and your courage. Heavenly Father, without you we are nothing, but with you we are everything, and we can face anything in the strength of the love of Christ. Lord, I want to thank you for Sitle sharing his story with us. I pray that his health continues to improve, that his life will become a, a testimony to the grace he experienced in getting through the COVID uh, experience. Lord, for Carl and his family and for Linda, I pray for their new business, that it will prosper. Lord, that you will provide for them. Lord, that his business in Mozambique will also thrive, that you will bless uh, his and Linda's marriage. Lord, I pray for, for Noni and the Gaza family, and she was so close <laughs> to the edge, and she was able to return to her family and to us, and we thank you for that grace and that healing. And may her life also 
be a daily witness to your goodness. And then, Lord, we give you thanks that Michelle was able to find a home amongst us here at Midchurch. Thank you for her witness and her life. We pray for you to bless her abundantly as she parents her children, Lord, as she moves forward in life. Thank you for the friendships that she's developed amongst us. Thank you for reminding us that we belong to a family bound together by the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks, Lord, for all our stories. Each of us have got a story to tell as we reflect on your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Folk, we have now over a number of weeks been discussing uh, expressing gratitude and saying thank you to the Lord. And I, I hope and pray that this month of September during 2020 will not be the only time when you focus on expressing thanks and that you will keep the habit, perhaps that you will have a, a gratitude journal and maintain the habit of uh, expressing to God uh, thanks for the many blessings that there are in your life. Friends, we're going to conclude our worship service uh, with a, a song that celebrates love, uh, the spirit of love. Uh, the tune is familiar to all of you. Uh, we sing a love. Come, let's worship the Lord. We sing a love that sets all people free that blows like wind that burns like scorching flame and folds like earth springs up like water clear come living love live in our hearts today we sing a love that seeks another's good, that longs to serve and not to count the cost of love that ye think finds itself made new. Come caring, love live in our hearts today. We sing a love unflinching, unafraid to be itself despite another's wrath, a love that stands alone and undismayed come strengthening love live in our hearts today friends go into the world in the power of the spirit and in all things and at all times remember that christ is with you so make your life your worship to the praise and glory of god You'll see us again next week. Amen.